Hi everyone, welcome to episode 25 of Sketch Support. I've got a few exciting things that I wanna share with you before we jump into the sketch details and layouts. But first, if you are new to this series, it's all about showing how you can adapt and customize a scrapbook sketch to better fit your needs. So I take one sketch and create multiple layouts with that same sketch, and each layout utilizes different methods to adapt to different photos, themes, and ideas. In this video, I'm using a new free one page sketch. You can download that sketch with the full measurements and placements at my family's online scrapbook store, Scrapbook Generation. I'll link to it down below. In this video, I'm gonna share four layouts using that one page sketch, and I will be going into detail of how and why I changed certain elements. So exciting thing number one is that I am now the new sketch artist for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. The very first issue with my sketches came out a few weeks ago, and it was seriously the coolest thing to see my sketches in a magazine and all of the beautiful layouts and cards created with them. They were so great. I'll link to the magazine down below so you can check it out if you want to. And the best part is that there are 10 new free sketches that you can download with that. Each issue will have two 12 by 12 inch, two 24 by 12 inch, two eight and a half by 11 and four card sketches. So that's a lot of free sketches. I am so overjoyed and so grateful for this opportunity. And I hope you all enjoy the sketches in this issue and in future issues. The second thing I wanted to share was that I have a new sketch guide out called Creating with Sketches. For several years, I've wanted to put together a guide on how to adapt and customize sketches. Since I so often teach and share about sketches through classes and this sketch support series, I wanted to have something available that took all that information and put it into one place. There are so many ways you can change up a sketch to work for you, and there's no way that can all be included in one episode of Sketch Support, but it is all included in this new guide. It goes into great depth of how I break down a sketch to adapt it to fit what I need. The guide itself is 42 pages and uses sketch and layout examples from this sketch support series, as well as other sketches and layouts as examples of the topics covered. So you get a visual as well. There are also five full one-page sketches and five full two-page sketches. Then there are 255 sketch examples. Each of the 10 full sketches has a four page PDF showing 25 to 26 examples of how you can adapt and customize that particular sketch. And there are some really, really fun and unique sketch options in there. So I'll link to that down below as well so you can go check it out if you're interested. So now we can finally get to the reason for this video with a look at the sketch that I have used as the starting point for each layout in this video. This sketch is one of those designs that is quite simple yet detailed at the same time. That sounds a little contradicting, but it's true. The base design is simple, a background that covers a square area in the middle of the layout with two photos and some small embellishments. The design concept of that square background is detailed and made up of triangle pieces. Those triangle pieces are really easy to make. All you have to do is cut a square and then cut that square in half diagonally. 
What I enjoy about this sketch is that you can easily adapt this background to so many things. If you don't like working with triangles, you can simplify it by using squares instead. If you wanted more detail, you could use smaller squares and triangles, or if you wanted less detail, you could use larger squares and triangles. If you are up for a big change, you can use a completely different shape. I loved the concept of a split shape, like how two of those triangles make a square. So you could play around with different split shapes. You could try hexagons, circles, stars, or hearts. And you'll see on one of my layouts a unique shape that fit the theme of my layout. Another thing that is really great about this sketch is that if you enjoy using six by six inch paper pads, this sketch is perfect for that. I could have used six by six inch papers on all of my layouts and I did on two of them. Or if you need to use up some scraps, this would be a really good sketch for that too. With my first layout, I made several changes to the sketch to better fit my theme while also still following the general design of the sketch. When I selected this picture, I knew that I wanted to create some sort of flag background with the triangle pieces. I love playing around with a theme and taking it to kind of an extreme level. I think it's fun trying to find ways to incorporate the theme of that layout into the design. To do that, I used a variety of blue pattern papers to make a square with stars and then red and white pattern papers to create the stripes. To have the flag design I had in mind, I felt like it was better to reduce the size of the triangle pieces so that I could add more. I wanted a larger area of the blue stars and I wanted more rows so I could have more stripes. I used one inch squares and then cut them in half diagonally to get this size of a triangle. When it came to adhering these pieces, I used my OmniGrid ruler, which is amazing for designs like this. I placed mine on the layout and then I could add my pieces along that ruler edge to make sure they were straight. Now, I tend to be a perfectionist about straight lines. However, I do think this would also look great, not so perfect and straight. And I thought about doing it, but my brain just won't let me let loose in that way. There are some designs that I can let loose and um, have things skewed a little bit, but with this one, I definitely wanted them straight. I couldn't see it any other way in my style. And uh, we have these rulers at Scrapbook Generation. I'll link to it down below if you wanna grab one. I use mine on every single layout and it really does make it so much easier to place things at a specific measurement. To really enhance the look of the flag design, I also changed up the stitching on the triangles to work with this theme. I added a blue stitched square around the blue triangle pieces. Then on the red and white triangles, I added horizontal lines with red and white stitching. This to me really brought the image of a flag background together. I had just one four by four inch photo for this layout. So I used that in place of the two, two and a half by three and a half inch photos. The combined measurements for the two photos on the sketch is five by three and a half, which really isn't that far off from a four by four inch photo. So I didn't have to make any major adjustments to make it work. I also tilted it like the photos on the sketch and I sanded the edges to expose that white core of the photo paper and to help that photo stand out. 
For my embellishments, I used a mix of stars and hearts. In the blue square, I cut out some stars from a pattern paper and adhered them with foam adhesive. One of the white papers I used for the stripes had little yellow stars, and I really liked that small addition of yellow with the red, white, and blue colors. So I added a few yellow stars around my embellishment clusters. There's a lot of yellow in my photo, so I thought it was a good complementary color. For my second layout, I made some big changes to work with the photos I had while still following the general design of the background of the sketch. I loved the idea of tossing out the photos on the sketch and instead using small photos mixed in with the triangles. It felt like a really fun option to work with this sketch and also work in some extra photos. I ended up using one and three quarter by one and three quarter inch photos and triangles. I still wanted to have a larger white border around the outer edges. So I thought going with a slightly smaller size of triangle would be better for me. I love utilizing white space on my layouts. I had someone comment on a video a few weeks ago and they said they didn't like all the white space on my layouts. And to them, it felt like wasted space. And I get that we all have different styles and preferences and I would never expect every single scrapbooker to create in the same way. But white space, even though it may not be for everyone, is definitely not wasted space, especially when creating busier designs or using busier papers like this. White space is a great way to give the viewer a resting point and it can be used to keep the focus on the important elements on your layout. With this layout, it adds a really nice frame and the purpose of a frame is to bring attention to the things inside of that frame. You'll have to tell me in the comments how you feel about white space. And there's no wrong answer. I promise you that. So don't feel afraid to comment. Um, are you comfortable with it? Or do you struggle to use it? Or do you just plain don't like it? It would be an interesting conversation to see what we all think about it. With my photos, I chose to arrange five of them in a single column. But you could also arrange them in a row going across the layout, or you could place them in random spots throughout the design. Personally, I like the idea of keeping them together in a strip so that they all stood out together and you aren't searching the layout design to find them. I think if you did want to spread them out randomly, you would be better off choosing papers that are a high contrast to your photos so that the photos stand out immediately. The sketch has four columns and four rows of triangles. And since I had five photos that I wanted to arrange in a column, I decided to add more triangles so that I had a photo in each row. I still wanted it to be the same sketch design. I just made it a little larger. For the rest of the layout, I tried to follow the sketch. I added some hand stitching on the triangles along with the stars. With the stitching, I used the same color for every triangle. I really like the darker blue and thought it would be a good color that would stand out on each pattern paper that I stitched on. I wanted it to be a really noticeable element on the layout. For each star, I used the same pattern paper as the triangle I placed it on. I sanded the edges of the star with a nail file and then used foam adhesive to give it some dimension. I also placed a tiny glitter star in the center of each one. I liked the idea of those stars being a subtle embellishment since it's such a detailed design. 
With my title and journaling, I place them next to the photos with a little chipboard camera. And then I didn't really embellish anything further than that. I felt like this was a complete design in my ideas, that it didn't need a bunch of embellishments. With my third layout, at first glance, you might not see the sketch, but I think once you hear the explanation and where I was coming from, you'll see that it's really not all that far off from the sketch. It may look different, but the sketch still had a major influence in the design. With kids, especially when they are little, it's action all the time. So many of my photos are of my kids running or jumping or sliding. They are go all the time. And I love using paper or designs on my layouts to show movement when I'm scrapbooking those action moments. Triangles are a great shape for doing that. So I turned the triangles around to all face the same direction, creating these rows that look like arrows. I still used the same amount of rows as the sketch. The arrows do create a taller background when arranged this way, so I added several more in each row to balance out the width. And I get that this looks nothing at all like the sketch background, but the idea came from that design. A lot of times I will look at a sketch and one element jumps out at me. And in this case, it was the triangles. And with that one element, an idea forms that in the end, it doesn't really look like the sketch. And I think that's the fun of using sketches. So many ideas can come to you from just one sketch. You have endless possibilities when it comes to adapting and customizing it to your needs, your ideas, and your style. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with your layout looking nothing like the sketch. I do that all the time. This time for the stitching, I used the same color as the pattern papers for a tone on tone look. And when I do this, I always try to pick a color that is a shade or two darker or lighter so that stitching really stands out. And this is a good time to mention that all of my sketches are going to have stitching on them. It's just what I do and how I envision creating these layouts. But don't ever feel like you can't use these sketches if you don't want to stitch. The stitching is always optional and you can often substitute a different product in place of it or use a pen or just leave it off altogether. I get that not everyone enjoys stitching like I do. So I just wanted to make sure you know that that is always optional. With the photos, title, and journaling, I followed the sketch almost exactly. When it came to the embellishments, I went a little extra. As I was going through my stash, I came across the tags that are peeking out at the top of the photos. I have always loved the look of tags on a layout, but for some reason, I seldom use them. And I don't know why, because I have tons of them. So lately, I've been kind of challenging myself to use them more. So I I jumped at the opportunity here. The tags were the perfect color to complement the papers. So I layered them and then tucked them slightly under the photos. For the rest of the design, I added a bunch of different stars layered together. I always save all die cuts and punched pieces. So all of these are leftovers from previous layouts, some from many, many years ago. Sometimes I think I should just let those scraps and pieces go, but then it's times like this that it makes me very thankful that I kept them. It made putting this layout together so much easier.
The last layout is always about showing how you can adapt a sketch to work for a different size of layout. I enjoy using one page sketches for two page layouts or vice versa. A lot of times doing that presents ideas that you might not have ever come to. It really opens the door for some unique and fun options. With this layout, it definitely looks quite far from the sketch, but again, there are several design elements from that sketch that are implemented into this design. First, I used circles and punched Mickey ears in place of the triangles. I loved the idea of playing around with a different shape. I used the circles as a base and kept the colors of those neutral by using a white grid paper and a solid black paper. I also love the idea of a split shape like you see on the sketch, how the triangles look like a square split in half. I really wanted to try applying that concept while using a different shape. I thought it could look really cool with hexagons or circles and using one of those shapes was my original idea. But as I was gathering supplies for this layout, I came across my Mickey punch and thought it might be fun to use that as my split shape. So I punched tons of Mickey ears out of a variety of pattern papers and solid papers and then cut them all in half. Then I mixed and matched them on top of the circles. Some of them have been adhered with foam adhesive to add some dimension throughout this whole design. And this was one of the layouts that I used six by six inch papers. And one of the greatest benefits of using six by six inch papers when you are creating smaller pieces is that the patterns are shrunken down as well. So you can punch these tiny shapes and still get a good amount of that pattern there. To make this one page sketch design work on a two page layout, I first extended the design across both pages by adding more shapes. I also extended them to the top and bottom edges of the layout to work with the photos I had and the way I wanted to arrange them. I had six three by five inch photos to work with for this layout. And my usual go-to for those photos would be to arrange them straight across the layout, three to a side, so they are balanced on the layout. And I thought that arrangement would work well with the sketch design. So I kind of designed around that. Those photos have been moved upward a bit to work better with the background design and circles. This arrangement and getting the spacing right between the circles was made so much easier using that OmniGrid ruler I mentioned earlier. And I promise I'm not like sponsored by them or anything like that. I would only recommend a product to you that it is something that I truly love. And I, I really do love this ruler. It is, it is wonderful. I also added a tilted chipboard frame to the last photo, giving kind of a similar look to the photos on the sketch. Then I added my title and journaling by that tilted frame, just like the sketch. For the rest of the layout, I kept things really simple. I didn't feel like there needed to be much more detail since the circles have so much. I added a few stars to the chipboard frame and then some word and phrase stickers on a few of the photos and that was it. So that's all for this episode of Sketch Support. If you enjoy using sketches and want to learn how to adapt and customize them, be sure to check out the new guide called Creating with Sketches. It goes in depth of how I break down a sketch design and adapt it to work with my needs. And it covers everything you need to know about making sketches work for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.